I'm gonna go ahead and lecture since the everybody was able to since like everybody in class except you. You, you should have. Uh, we had lab today, so you should have showed up to lab. I'm sorry for that. It's just a bit slow to audit that. I'm talking about that stuff. Oh, okay. Sure. No worries. Okay. So, um, yeah, you're more than welcome to sit in. So the I'm gonna go ahead and lecture since uh, since we've got our. Uh, since, now the reason I played that video was because not only did we spend money making that video and I might as well spread it as far as I can, but it's really absurd the amount of stuff you can get across when you have a script um, because that was like a bunch of topics all at once. So I'm going to start out from the e with the easy topic right now and then we'll mo move on to some of the other topics uh, so that we'll, before we go on to the uh, topic of lists. So um, one of the things that exist in Java that you may have had some interaction with was the wrapper class. All right, so if we go and create a new project, okay, and I'll just create it over here because um, I'm just going to create a, just an empty project just for this, uh, these examples. So, and then I just have to find an appropriate place to upload them. So source uh, wrapper example. And again, to simply uh, in IntelliJ, it's very easy to program st uh, to basically do stuff very quickly. So t I'll just go ahead and create my main function, public static void main, PSVM, hit tab over there. Um, now, what we're going to do now is we are going to sh show you what a wrapper class is. So every single primitive uh, has a wrapper class. And the reason we have wrapper class is that sometimes most and and that's and the most poignant example is when we're dealing with generics is that we sometimes we need an object and, but we don't have an object if we weren't dealing with a primitive right a primitive just stores data it doesn't it doesn't act like an object so instead for uh, we can use something called a wrapper class so you may have had exposure to a wrapper class, like when we're doing something like this, int, uh, int value is equal to um, integer dot parse int. So say you're given a string and you want to turn it into a value, is there, turn it into an integer. So this would go ahead and print out the integer value three. Right? This converts the string to the int 3. Does that make sense to everybody? Right? So, the inter so the wrapper class, first off and foremost, has a bunch of useful functions for you. Right? It's got stuff like parseInt as well as maxInt and, um, and minInt. So it gets, has the maximum values and the like. So, if we, so it's got a whole bunch of these static functions. Uh, integer dot parse int, compare, uh, max, what is the lowest bit, what is the highest bit, you know. So these, these all have, it even has an as some function if you want to add two integers together. Like, but not that you really need that. So, so, but that, so that's the primary thing that, we, that we've seen, that you may have seen uh, an integer used for so far. But when we use it as a wrapper class, we can just simply use it this is an integer object as opposed to an int primitive. And in other programming languages, this might be a bit of an issue, might be a bit of a headache or whatnot. But in Java, it's no problem. I can just simply go integer i is equal to 5, just like that, just like you would, would with a string. You don't have to do new integer or anything like that. right? If I, in fact, if I go new integer over here, right, it tells me, hey, uh, there's, you don't need to do it. It's unnecessary boxing. So there's this process that Java has called auto boxing, which is a word you will never hear again, um, aside from the, this, because I'm not going to test you on, on it, right? It's just, it never makes sense to do so. Uh, but auto boxing is this ability that Java will automatically convert from a primitive to an object for you uh, when we need to. So we can take a primitive and box it up into an object automatically. Okay, so right, we take an in integer primitive like this, five, or even better, value, 
and store it in there. There's also auto unboxing. Integer x is equal to i, where we basically we can take the primitive out of an object. Java will automatically convert that primitive to a, uh, sorry, that object into a primitive. No conversion on your part is needed. None whatsoever. Okay? Um, the only thing is that I don't think like casting really works here, right? You know how normally, how sometimes, how you could totally do this? Let's see. Actually, no, you can't do that. Um, but like if I was working with double, uh, if I was doing double D is equal to 3.0, right? If I put in 3, this would automatically convert the 3 into a 3.0. If I'm working with, um, if I'm working with that, that actually gives, if I'm working with the double class, that actually gives me an error, right? Because you can't take an integer, an int, and convert it into a double class. Um, you, auto boxing and auto unboxing only works for, from, 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 it's from an int to an integer, a double to a double, a float to a float, um, a character to a character, right? So, um, but this makes it pretty useful. So you can inter so you can basically use doubles and integer, you know integers and ints interchangeably, uh, which is really useful. Um, this also means that like I also now has some functions that you can call, like the byte value. You can use the byte value if the value of it is long or short. So th these are all very useful things that we can use. Um, all right, so that's really all there is until uh, to the uh, to the wrapper classes. There's not much to them at all. Um, there is, and they're fairly straightforward to remember. You've got your integers for integers. You've got your capital D doubles for doubles. Your capital, and then for you've got your capital B booleans for booleans. Every single uh, class has a wrapper class. Sorry, every single primitive has a wrapper class. Um, int. For you, the only one that's weird is that you have an integer for int and you have a character for cars, right? You you have a character for cars as opposed to capital C char. That's all. It's not really too hard to remember. So where do we use these things? Um, we use them in generics, and I might as well make my new class here. Um, generic example. And I don't really need, feel the need to go into necessarily too much detail. I'm going to see how well you guys can understand it without my standard array of examples. Because I feel like it can shorten the amount of time that you need for understanding on this. Okay, so when we're dealing with, so the primary thing that we're going to be learning about are lists. Okay? Um, specifically, we're, um, and that's a type of collection we're dealing with. Okay, you don't have to worry about it too much right now. Except that um, there's, but basically we like to use generics in here, um, and I'll prove and I'll show you basically by showing you what happens if we don't use a list, if we don't use generics. So here I'll go ahead and take a list. I'll import it. It's from java.util.list. You want the java.util.list? So list list is equal to new array list. Now, in a list is an interface, and I'll get into what that means later, since, again, I just want to focus on what generics are and why we use them. But this is a list of objects, and notice that basically it's giving me a nice fat warning over here. It should give me a nice fat warning over here, uh, saying, okay, declare a list with type array list, whatever. And all you have to know is that an array list is a type of list, right? This is polymorphism in action, like we saw yesterday. Um, and with a list, it's just completely unordered right now, and all I can and all I have to do, and we'll just show what the add function does. I can add something to the list, so um, taco shells to use our right taco shells uh, list dot add cheese list dot add. Uh, ground meat list dot add guac right so I'm just making the list over here now the now lists 
you can use it for both ordered and unordered data. Here, if it's a shopping list, you generally don't care about the order the data appears in, but it will be in the order we add it in. Yes? Yes. Because I didn't specify the type of list it is, because I just said it's a list and I didn't use generics, and notice that it's highlighted yellow because I've got warnings and it says unchecked call to raw type uh, util, Java util list. And obviously, if we're using ground meat and it's raw, it's not, no, it's just, just a bad pun. But anyway, the, um, but it's, here it's saying that basically we're using a raw list without using any generics in it. So that, that could give you some errors as we're going to see in a bit. But for right now, I'm just trying to show you this is what a list, all a list will do is that I can add it and then it, I can print it out pretty straightforward and it's going to look a lot like printing out an array. So I run it and it has taco shells, then cheese, then ground meat, and then guac. And it makes sense that I add that there. I can also add something to the beginning of the list or to any particular index by specifying what index I want first. So if I say index 0, this will add it to index 0, and it will automatically move everything out of the way, which is pretty useful. So here, if I run it again now, guac will be at the beginning of the list because I added it to index 0. Guac, taco shells, cheese, ground meat. OK. So the E is just short for I is for index, E is for element. So, um, and again, these are just simply the, uh, these don't actually exist, that, that, this little thing in here, that doesn't actually exist. That's, again, IntelliJ just being super useful, trying to remind me, hey, the integer goes first, and then the element, just so you don't get confused. Okay, so the issue comes when I want to read things out of a list. So if I want to iterate through a list, I'm just going to use a standard for loop. So for int i is equal to z zero, i is less than, uh, now this is the most frustrating thing I find in Java. You'll, you will hear me rant about how stupid a decision this is. Okay, so let's talk about it. How, how do you tell how big a string is? Strings uh, don't use size. They use dot length, with or without parentheses. It is dot length with parentheses. String dot length. For, for a string, it's dot length with parentheses, right? So if I want to figure out how big a string is, right? A string, string s, right, is equal to blah, blah, blah all one, okay, s dot length with parentheses to figure out how big it is, okay? If, on the other hand, I have an array, int array is equal to, uh, int array r is equal to one, two, three, right? If I want to figure out how big an array is, it's dot length without the parentheses. Pain in the butt. Cheap question on a test uh, in 1068, I find. I find it's a stupid question to ask because you'll find out very, very quickly whether or not it's dot length or dot length. And it's stupid because Java's made no, made, did not make it easy on purpose. So for anything kind of collection, though, we use dot size with parentheses. So when we're dealing with trees, lists, everything in this class that we're be dealing with, uh, it's going to be dot size with parentheses because it's the size of the collection. So. That's that. So yeah, rant over. Uh, except for the fact that Python is easier because every you to figure out how big it is in Python, you just simply put it into a length. You put the thing you want to find out the size of in a length func, in a dot. Sorry, in an len function, and then it returns how big it is. I plus plus. Okay. So um, so first off, here's our first problem. We know that this list is a list of strings, right? So string thing, so for string thing at um, list.get, and I'll get into how get, but get gets the thing at index i, okay? It gets the thing at a particular index. I'll go through all the list functions individually in a bit, don't worry, okay? But the thing is, is that I know that the thing, all the things in here are strings, 
right? But it's a list of objects. So actually, I don't necessarily know that because some cheeky bugger could have uh, totally done this. Uh, List.add5. Could have totally added 5 to the list right over there. Right? And now it's no longer a list of strings. So I either have, so I have two options. Okay? The first option I have is to use the, is to cast, which says, hey, I can convert this into a string and tell Java, no, 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 it's a string, trust me. And then I'm just going to print it out. Right? And that will work just perfectly fine. Or better yet, I can also just print out, I can print out the length. Okay, so now I'll just say, hey, everything in here is a string, right? But now I have to cast every time I get something out of it, which is a bit annoying. Or I have to say it's an object thing, right? But if it's an object, then I can't call the length function on it. Uh, furthermore, if, again, somebody's a cheeky bugger and decides to add this in over here, list.add5, We will run it, and it will run the first two things, and then it will get an error saying, hey, an integer can't be cast into a string. You totally told me it, it was a string. So by accident, it's easy, without using generics, you can easily just shoot yourself in the foot. Basically, this was a, this was a shopping list. It was a list of just basically items on the list. Sorry? It wouldn't because it's an integer. You can't turn an integer into a string. An integer class, too, right? It's an integer. I put an int in the list, but the list has to take an object, right? Okay. So anytime we're dealing with collections, it's going to be an integer. Yes? So a, a list of generic and Java is essentially just a normal list in Python? Yes. So, this, so th a list without any generics is like a list in Python. You can add anything. Right, you can add anything to it. Yeah, you can do like whatever you want. Basically. Why? Why would we cast? What's the purpose? You don't want to. I'm just saying this is why we want to use generics. So if instead I say this is a list of, if I use generics over here by saying this is a list of strings, and then all I have to do on this side is just use di what's called diamond notation because it kind of looks like a diamond when I use less than or greater than. Um, that's a feature like starting in Java 1.7 or 1.8, which basically says uh, you don't need to repeat yourself. This just simply says, hey, it's a list of strings. And now if we look over here, we actually get an exception over here if I try to add an integer. It's saying, no, 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 you can't do that. No, you cannot add a 5, which is an integer, into an array, in, in, sorry, into a list of strings. It's verboten. It's not allowed. Yes? Um, I just have two questions. But, um, it is seems a little unclear of when you're going from like a, a string primitive to like a string object. There's no string primitives. So, so they're all objects? They're all objects. Okay. They're all objects inside of a collection. Okay. So, so this 5 over here gets converted into an integer object. Okay, okay so, so that's why. So, so collect. Yeah. All the string declarations are really capital. Yep. Yeah, and strings are and strings in Java. There are no string primitives in Java. There's just string objects in Java. There are no primitives for strings in Java. There's string. There's characters in Java. Because those strings are basically like an array of characters. Yeah, strings are super arrays of characters. Yeah. Um, the second question. Um, I know what kind of common practice in Python. For example, if you were doing this, like printing the thing, if you only want to print the strings, so you do like a test, like see what it finds it's a string. Yep, there is a then there is a test. Um, you can have there is a so for instance you could do if thing instance of string saying hey is thing a string. Yeah. Yeah. This is saying if this is a if this is a string. We don't use it too often, though, because with, when we use generics, we are basically knowing, we basically know what type it's going to be. And if you have to know, and if you, if you want really a list of stuff that you just want objects in, you can just totally make it a list of objects. Um, just the generic object. 
class. And then you can add anything into it that you want to. And you don't get any of those pesky warnings. Be um, and the nice thing about this is that basically you get to assume now, though, that everything in here is, a, is going to be a string. And there's safeguards in place, right? It gives me a warn. It gives me an error trying to add, which is fantastic. All right. So let's talk a bit about the string, the list interface, and what the heck is an interface, okay? So, um, and I'm going to do this by cheating and going to the Java source code. Right. By the way, you can totally look up the Java source code. So Java source code uh, for the list, and I will zoom in so that everybody, so it's totally so it's visible for everybody. So this is from Java eight. It doesn't change too much. Um, right here we go. Line wrap on. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah, copyright 1997, 2013. Oracle, boo, and its affiliates. Sorry, love to. I love everybody loves to hate Oracle. There's, they make it so easy though. Um, so, I know. But anyway, so a bunch of comments over here. Notice that actually a lot of this is uh, comments. Notice all the lines that start with stars. Almost everything in this, in this file is a comment. So uh, specifically, this is a, the list is an interface. And what an, in, and what an interface is, it's kind of a blueprint for writing a class. It's saying, um, there are all, so as we'll find out, there are two primary ways for implementing a list. Okay, there is going to be the array list, which we use to build with an array, and we use a linked list, which we use by using, which we build by using references. Okay, now the array, now what the list interface says is that if you want to be considered a list in Java, then here are the requirements that you are required. Here are the functions, the methods that you are required to implement to be a list. Okay, and I'll show you. Uh, what that means in a minute, but like here, right? Package util, it's saying it's in the Java util package. It's saying import this function. Um, here's the authors. So now it says here is a interface called list. And note as the notice it has the generic type here e. This means that basically it's by putting an interface over here, by putting an e over here, it's saying it's a list of something. We don't know what those things are. We're going to leave that to the to the programmer, right? But basically, if you say it was a list of strings, then anywhere that we would see a E, a capital E as a type, basically on the fly, we would be replacing that E with string, which is pretty cool. Basically, it's a variable for a class type. So it would go through and replace everything in the source code with a with a, essentially with a string on the fly or an integer on the fly if we need it. Um, interfaces can extend uh, other interfaces. They can inherit, so a list is a type of collection, so it has to do all the things a collection can do. Collection is, the super is basically the super class for all the ways to organize data. Not too important here, but anyway, let's take a look. Uh, to be a list, you have to have a size function. Notice that basically it is, it is a function, right? It's got the parentheses here. Doesn't take any parameters. But with an interface, it has no body. Interfaces are also what we are, are at, use what are called abstract functions, which are basically completely unimplemented functions. All you say is that, it, that we ha you need to be a list. First, you have to have a function called size that has no parameters, and it returns an int. So I could totally have a working list by just returning zero for size, but it would be legal, but not necessarily, you know, working. Um, a list has to have an is empty function, which will return a boolean. A list has to have a contains function, which takes in an object and returns a boolean. It has to have an iterator function, which returns an iterator. We'll get over again. We will get into what those are. Um, in a bit more detail, but they're super useful. Um, it has to have a two array function, which, given this, given a, um, sorry, which given um, nothing, just returns an array of objects. Convert that into an array, and then this one that's got weird notation, which we'll get into. It return it turns us an array into an array, I guess. I have no idea what that one does, to be honest. But you have to have an add function. And notice it says ee over here, 
which looks really weird. But remember, basically, if it's a list of strings, this E would get turned into a string on the fly. This E over here, the capital E. Um, e is used as the, basically the, so as far as I understand for, gener for the generic language, by the way, it, first off, generics can be uh, can be whatever we want them to be. Like we can use whatever symbols we want, but E is typically used for things that contain elements. Uh, T is used if you don't care about the elements and you just want a type, basically. So E is for elements, T's are for types, and then we also and then we'll learn later we also have K and V for key value. But basically, we can use them wherever. So lists you need to be able to add things to a list. You have to be able to um, have a remove all, add all, replace all, a sort function, an equals function, a get function, a set function. So these are all things that are requirements for lists. Okay? But notice that it doesn't do any of the work of implementing them. Okay? That's the job of array list. So let me go ahead and and take a look at the array list function now. So an interface, you're pretty much never going to make it. You're never going to make an interface in this class, but you will. But a list is an interface. It's basically like this is an outline for it. But what's nice is that by having this list class, we can implement something as an array list or a linked list as the needs be. So let's take a look at the array list class. Right? It says, hey, an array list is a type of abstract, abstract list which implements list, random access, clonable, serializable. So actually, you can have multiple interfaces. Uh, you, so you can only extend one class, but because interfaces are empty, you can implement as many of them as you want since there's no conflicts. The reason you can only extend one class in Java, right, in case, right, we've probably been told that rule. You can only extend one class. Anybody tell you why you can only extend one, one class in Java? No. no, okay. So suppose you have a function called, uh, you have a function, sorry, you have a class A, and it has add, and it has the add function in it, okay? And then you have a class B that has a, that has the function add inside of it, okay? Now, let's say for the sake of argument in Java, you could totally extend two classes, right? And we could just put a list of them and just separate them by comma. So suppose I have a public class Z. You thought I was going to do C, but I tricked you. So, um, so public class Z extends A comma B. And honestly, that's it. I'm extending, so I don't really have to write anything else as a legal class. But I've inherited an A class and a B class, right? And they both have the add function. Uh, the add function takes in no parameter, but it does return an integer, right? It's a bit weirdly named, but whatever. Who cares? The point is that they, they have the same name, the same inputs, the same outputs. Uh, so now if I'm in a function, now if I do like zz is equal to new z somewhere in some other class, and then I do uh, z dot add. The question becomes, which one am I using? Right? I've got a bit of a conflict over here. Do I use a's add or do I use b's add? So you have two choices when you're designing a language to, to deal with this. Basically, ambiguity. Remember, in programming, you can't have any ambiguity. You have to have a rule. So, um, we have two choices. The first is to do Java's approach, which is to totally just say, no, can't do that. We're not going to, we're going to avoid this by only extending one class. Okay? You can only extend one class. There's also the, the Python takes the other approach, which says, okay, if I have two classes that have the same, uh, that have the same function, even though that could be a bit dangerous, I'm going to allow it. And the class that's listed first in the list is the one that will be you, that we'll call. That's the way Python does it. Um, but for Java, it says no, can't do that. No, no, no. We're just going to use the first one. So that's why in Java you can only extend one class. 
But for interfaces, they're empty. So who cares? Um, there's no conflict because there's no code in there to conflict. Okay, and so as you can see in here, there's a there's fun you know there is a control F add right we've let's see add E so here there's a you know actual code in here where we've implemented all those classes so I'm going to boot up J shell and just kind of show you um, the kind of operations we can do um, with a list okay. Now, um, the book likes to use like the seven dwarves, but um, I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm a bit of a nerd, so I like swords. So I'm going to make a list of strings. And by the way, JShell is a REPL for, for Java, meaning that basically it's, so a REPL is a read, evaluate, print, sorry, read, evaluate, print loop. So it's going to read what I write, it's going to evaluate that function, that function, and then it's going to print out its result, and then it's going to continue to loop, okay? So it's just basically a way for us to just kind of program the example to write something really quick. So list of strings, sorts, is equal to new array list. So first off, I cannot do list of strings new list. I can't do this. And the reason is, is because lists are interfaces. They are abstract. You cannot you cannot instantiate a list, right? Because if you remember the list code, it's essentially empty, right? It's a blueprint. I can't live in a blueprint, right? I can't, like, if you get by a blueprint from a house, I'm not done. I can't just, like, curl up in that blueprint. I'll be rather cold. Um, instead, you have to actually build it with something, with an actual instance of that class. So, list swords is a new array list. So, we now see that swords is an empty list, it's a list of strings. Which means, of course, as I've shown you previously, that if I try to add something to it, source.add4, it will tell me there's an incompatible type. We can't convert the integer the into a string. Okay, so let's go ahead and add one type. So let's go ahead and start out with uh, a long sword, adding that to our sword list. That's one type of sword. So when we add a uh, something to a list, it goes on to the last index. So now if I do um, an arming sword, that will also add it to the list. Now add the add function uh, for, mis for a reason that will, be, uh, that will be unknown until chapter seven, uh, the add function returns true or false, okay? Um, and if it successfully adds, if, it, if you can successfully add the item to a collection, and this is because it comes from the collection interface. Collections have an add function, you add an item to it and it returns true or false. If you could add it to the collection, a list is a type of collection, then it returns true. If you couldn't add it, you return false. You can, the only time you're gonna not be able to add something to a list, if it's like literally too big to keep in memory and it crashes your computer, okay? That's the only time you can't have add it to a list. Uh, list, uh, it will always return true. It returns false on things like sets, where basically, which we'll see, can only contain a single copy of an item. So, but, so it returns true, and if I just simply type swords now, it will print out that we've got long sword, arming sword. As I also said, you could specify what index you want to add something to. So I could add, um, so I could add the good old famous uh, katana to, um, to index zero. And this will move it, if I did so, this would put a uh, katana at the beginning of the list. If I said index one, it will put it in between longsword and arming sword. Arming sword's currently at index one, and this would just simply insert it in index one and push everything currently there over to the right. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice that when we add it to an index, it doesn't return true or false. This is because adding it at index is specific for list because only lists have an index. Lists are the only are the only data structure we learn that actually have indices. What size is the Um, the index? Yeah. Yo, yeah, the index is always an integer. Yeah. The only time that we're going to be dealing something with something weird like that that you have to worry about what the type is is when we worry with about key value pairs for hash maps. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and do um. So let's go ahead and try. So we've got now. 
uh, something of um, so we can add to pretty much whatever index we want so long as it's a legal index. However, uh, some indices are not legal. So say if I want to add to index 17, and let's go ahead and add scimitar to index 17, right? I can't add that to index 17 because it's si this is a list of size 3. 17 is out of range, right? If I were to add it to 17, that would have a bunch of like null gaps in between there, right? So it's not going to allow me to do that. You can't have a gap in your list, essentially. So it is legal, however, for me to add scimitar to index 3 which is the end of the list, right? So index 0, index 1, index 2. So long as it does, wouldn't leave any gaps, I can add anything anywhere. So I can add scimitar to index 3, no problem. Um, and I could totally add a falchion to uh, index 4. I don't know if I spelled it correctly, but that's OK. So you can add to a specific index. Um, and then let's go ahead and add to index 0 a Jian, uh, which is Chinese. Jian, longsword, katana, arming sword, scimitar, falchion. Right. So, right, we added Jian at index 0, and it just pushes everything over. How does it push everything over? It depends on whether you're using an array list or a linked list. An array list, we'll learn, uses an array to do everything underneath. So it's essentially automating an array, uh, all these operations on an array. A linked list, all it has to do is just simply tack it on to the beginning, and it's good. Um, so that's the add method. But if we have an add, we have a remove. We, there's also a remove. So let's go ahead and add something that's not a sword to our sword list, and we'll go at, then we'll go and remove it. So let's go ahead and add at index 4 a... Um, Naginata, which is not a sword. It's more of a sword on a stick, right? It's a pole arm. It's a, it's a stick with a, with a blade on the end. Way too into weaponry here. Um, anyway, so we've got our, but it's not a sword. Not by my definition, at least. One, two, three, four. It's a pole arm. So let's go ahead and remove it from the list. So the remove function, what that will do is that um, is that it will remove um, an item from a list at a specific index. So if I go swords dot remove, and if I use index zero one two three four, if I do index four, it will remove it. Um, now the removing also has this side benefit of when you remove something, it will also store it for you. It will also retrieve the item for you. So if I look at swords, it went ahead and removed Naganata. It moved everything down, so there's no gap in there. And not only that, it's, I was able to restore the item I removed in its own variable. Right? You don't have to store a thing. You can just totally remove it and like throw it away if you want to. But it's, the option is there. Okay, so the, so the add and remove, uh, what makes that this special is that you can't really add and remove items to a list, uh, to an array, right? With an array, you can't change the size. You can't add and remove items to an array. You can insert items, and you can retrieve items, and you can change what they are, but you can't, like, change the size of an array, which kind of gets to the mystery of how are we using an array list then? And the answer is we totally cheat. Um, so, um, so let's just consider the other two operate the other um, three operations we really care about. Um, yes. Arrays and array lists will pretty much work the exact same way, but in a linked list, works. In, you can do a lot of the same operations, but it will work in very different ways. Uh, array lists are. So as you'll learn, array lists are fantastic if you want to retrieve, if you want to find something at a specific index, if you want to retrieve something at a specific index, if you want to change something at a specific index, 
If you want to insert it in the middle or remove something from the middle, not so great, especially if you want to insert or remove something from the beginning of an array list. Linked lists, on the other hand, if you want to add something at the end of a, of a linked list or you want to add something at the beginning of a linked list, fantastic. If you want to get something at a specific index in a linked list, you're going to have a nasty time. Linked list, they're basically the inverse of each other. They're good at whatever the other one is terrible at. So, um, so let's look at the other three my primary func functions we care about. List.size, which returns the size of something. Um, the list.get, which given a index, a valid index, it will return something. So sort.get2, it returns katana. And then, um, and, then the, and then the set function. String thing replaced. And the set function will replace something. And it also, like remove, will return the thing that you just replaced. So for instance, over here, inst say I want to go ahead and you give the index first, and then you say uh, what you want to replace it with. So I want to replace my uh, long sword, index 1, with Zweihander, which means two-hander, because I want a bigger sword. So thing replaced now stores long sword, and swords now has Zweihander instead of long sword. Um, although I would point out that if you do find uh, yourself in a, du a duel to the death with a melee weapon, then I highly recommend not going with the sword unless you have trained with one. Instead, pick up the pointy stick, the spear. It's much easier to use. Um, so, um, so those are all the operations a list can do. Um, now, when we talk about what so we can do those things with an array list um, with a or a linked list. Now, um, part of what I do in the videos, and I'll get started here, is that I typically implement my own uh, array, my own array list class. So I'm going to call it my array list. So so Java doesn't get confused with the fact that there's an array list in any other array list, right? To show you how it would work. And also, the reason I do this is because I'm not actually going to make it a list. I'm not going to implement the list function. Implements. I'm not going to do this. If I did this, right, first off, I'll get like a million errors to begin with. And the reason is, is not only just because I have to import it, but also because uh, I have to implement all those methods. That's a lot of methods I have to implement. I don't know. That's like a million or something. I don't know. I'm not good at numbers. A lot of methods. Um, so I have to implement all those methods. But really, all I care about is showing you the methods that we care about. So I'm not going to implement it. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to create a list. And just know that this is kind of the, this is pretty much kind of the way that. Um, that array list actually works. You can check out the source code if you want to. You're probably not going to. I pretty much never do um, for this, but you could if you wanted to. Um, elementary data. Ugh. Yeah, that's nasty. Okay. So I'll go ahead and try build and show you guys how to build an array list. And then um, tomorrow, then on Thursday, what the homework will be is mo is mo is working on some of the functions. One of the functions, uh, the specifically, I think the is permutation one. That one is a nasty sucker. Okay, it is a deliberately nasty homework problem. You are not so we're going to do all we're going to do that one together in lab. Okay, because that one's a nasty one, um, and doing that together will count as a part of your participation grade. So it will count as one of your quiz grades. Speaking of quizzes, um, your first quiz will be um, will be on Thursday in lecture. So because might as well do it in the lecture hall because that's when you're supposed to be doing it. So um, and it will be on Canvas. It shouldn't be too bad at all. Um, and if it is, well, we'll try it again then. <laughs> So, all right. So, the way an array list works is that we are going to use an array to implement all the functionalities of a list. So, um, 
So this is a list of E's. So the array means it's going to also be of type E. Um, we don't want the user to see that we've actually got an array underneath there, so we keep it private, right? We don't want the user to be able to go in and change it without, with, in any way that we don't want, so we say private E, um, and we're going to call it, uh, we can call it either list or data. I'll go ahead and call it list because it's going to be actually be our list. Um, and then we need to keep track of two things for a list. We need to keep track of um, uh, basically the size of the list uh, in size. And what the size is, is how many items are currently in the list. Okay, So this is pretty important. The size is how many things are currently in the list. And then we have another thing, the capacity. And the capacity of a list is how many, list, how many items an array list can hold. How many items the array list can hold. You know, uh, before we have to, because remember, a, a, the array, if I create an array with ten, that can hold 10 items, with a capacity of 10, it can only ever hold 10 items. So if I try to add an 11th item, I'm kind of up the creek without a paddle, you know? Out of luck here. So the way an array list gets around this is that whenever our, uh, our capacity gets all the way filled up and we need to make, and we're too big, and our list is too big, what we're gonna do is a rather expensive operation, but it works which is that we are going to create a new list, uh, sorry, a new array that's twice the size of our original array, twice the size of the current, or rather twice the size of the current array, and then copy everything over. And to the user, it's completely opaque. They don't see anything happen. So the capacity helps us track basically when we need to fill up, when we need to refill. So when the size of the list would, when the size and the capacity are kind of very close to each other, we need to you know, uh, basically, you know, fix that. Um, so there isn't too much hackiness involved in this, except for what I'm about to do now. The constructor is the only hacky bit, and I'm so sorry about this, but I've not been able to figure out a better way to do this. Um, and I'm basically going because, and it's just because of the way arrays were and generics work, which is that they don't really work together for some reason. Ar arrays were not implemented in Java original. Sorry, I'm not. Generics were not in Java originally. Um, they, they only got added in Java 1.5, and for reference, that's the version I started learning, right, when I was an undergraduate back in 2005? Yeah, so. Um, so what we do in the constructor is that we set up the initial thing. So the size of our initial list is obviously going to be zero. The capacity, we want to create an array of, let's say, Let's go ahead and create a um, public stat public final static int, which I just threw a lot of words at you right over there. Init and I'll go through them. Initial capacity, but this basically uh, and I'll say ten. So public final means nobody can change it. Static means that it's a class function, so every array shares one copy of this number or every list shares one copy of this number. Capacity is equal to initial capacity. So basically, I, the initial, you know, if I need to change the initial capacity of the list, I can just change it over here. And then finally, uh, we need to actually create a list of size 10. So we just simply say, we would love to be able to do this. Uh, new list, sorry, list is equal to new, um, array of ease of initial capacity. All right, which is how you make everything else, except for some reason I get this cockamamie error which says uh, the E parameter cannot be instantiated directly, which is saying that basically you can't create new E's because you don't know what it's going to be. So what we do instead, because it's an array though, is just a bunch of memory pointers. They're just a bunch of memory references. We totally cheat. We say it's an object. It's an array of objects that we cast into an array. This is the only hacky bit. The only part that doesn't make sense. The only part, and I'm not even ever going to test you on this. I'm just saying this is the only hacky bit. Initial capacity. It's an object, and I'm going to cast it into an array of E's. B 
because it's memory locations, so it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> These are just references. It's a bunch of null references right now, so it doesn't matter. So it's perfectly fine to do it right there. That's it, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about, so we have five functions to implement. Uh, we have size, we have add, remove, and we have, um, Sorry, we have size, we have add, remove, and we have um, get and set. So let's do the easy one first, shall we? Uh, public get, public int get. Um, sorry, public e. What am I doing? I was just thinking to myself, oh, get was very easy too. Uh, so I, my, my fingers were, so. My fingers decided to have the minds of their own. Public int size. This is fairly straightforward. We are just going to return the size. Right? All right, let's go ahead and do, since that's easy, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, card function now, uh, add. Okay. Public um, e. So there's two add functions, right? There's the one where we just add to the end. So public boolean e item. This one will just add to the end. I'm not going to implement it yet, but we do know that it's always going to return true, so we'll go ahead and implement that. And then there's another add function, the whole uh, add given an index. Int index, please add this item to that index, at that index. Okay. Um, and I'm going to totally just cop out on this and say two functions. Who wants to implement two functions? I just want to implement one function. So if I'm just adding to the end, that means I'm adding it to index size, right? So if the list is size three, that means the next index I can add to is three. The, the index that they add will be three. If I have a list of size a million, then the last index, the, the, the index that the next item is going to go on is going to be a million, right? A list of size, of, of size n has the indices from 0 to n minus 1. Remember? So that means that if I, the next item would go on to n. Does that make sense to everybody? So that means that I can just totally implement this first function by going uh, add size item. Right? So I'm just going to, I'm passing the buck literally. So that all I have to focus on is writing this one function that says, hey, given an item and an index, please put it in this index. All right? And that's fairly straightforward. And it's actually not too bad. So the first thing we want to do in our add function is something I don't want to forget, which is that when we're at the end of this, I want to remember to increment the size. So I'm just going to put size plus plus at the end so I don't forget about it. Make sense? If I add an item, I increment the size. It should go up by one, size plus plus. Okay. Um, okay, the next thing I need to do is actually make sure that it's probably a valid index to add it at. Right? I want to make sure I don't want to leave any gaps in, so I need to make sure that this is a valid index. So I'm going to say if so I have to check what indices are valid. First off, um, in Java, negative indices are illegal. This is not actually true for every programming language. Yeah. So totally, so one of my favorite things about Python, and you're going to hear me rant and rave about Python and how much I love it. Uh, Python, uh, L, um, A, sorry, L is equal to, so this is a list in Python. A, B, C, right? L at index 2 is going to be C, right? 0, 1, 2. L at index 3 is going to be out of bounds. But if I do negative 1, it gives me the last item. And negative 2 gives me the second to last item. Negative 3 gives me the third to last. And negative 4 is going to give me out of bounds. Right? Yes? Are there, are we gonna, is there any like, real equivalent in Java to tuples or dictionaries? Uh, there are. Um, I'm not sure about tuples, but yes, dictionaries, we have hash maps. Okay. Um, I'm not sure about, I mean, you've got lists, so tuples don't really need too much. I mean, you've got your lists and you've got your sets. I think there's probably an equivalent there, but with, um, but 
with um, you have your hash sets and your hash maps, and hash maps are dictionaries. Hash maps, hash t tables, dictionaries, they, they're uh, associated arrays, they're all the name for kind of the same uh, idea, and we, do learn, and we do learn those. I did my dissertation research on distributed hash tables, so I do know quite um, a bit about those. So, um, so index. So first off, if the index is negative, so if index is less than zero, uh, then that's bad. Also, if the index is greater than size, right? Because size is the bit, last index you can add it to that you would have no gap, right? If it's si if, remember, if it's size n, that means that 0 to n minus 1 is filled, so we can add something to n and there would be no gaps. But if we have something at n plus 1, that'd be a problem. So if index is greater than size, then that's bad. So in this case, what we're going to do is that we are going to break the program. We are going to probably, we are going to actually create an error. So you've probably never done that before, but errors in Java are exceptions. There are two types of ex exceptions. There's, uh, I think there's, but there's runtime exceptions, and then I can't remember the other. I don't know if it's a compile time. I think you can just get errors at compile time. But you get, you have um, exceptions that basically that can happen anytime, um, and it's pretty easy to handle an exception. You just throw exceptions, like you're throwing a hissy fit or something. So the way you do that, and by the way, because everything in Java is object-oriented, exceptions are objects too, so we create new exceptions. Um, there's many different types of exceptions. The one that I find um, particularly um, useful out of here is the index out of bounds exception. And you can totally create your own exceptions, by the way. So you can throw an index out of bounds exception if you want to, right over there. Um, and the reason that specific uh, exception, you want to run that specific exception as opposed to an exception, is that if you throw an exception, that's one that has to be checked. Um, you have to have a try catch block for it. Or you have to have a throws over here. But with index out of bounds, you don't have to. Um, we can pretty much put anything we want here. We could put, um, we can have, a, here you need a message. So I'm going to say that basically um, index plus is an invalid index loser, right? Might, might as well insult our user and our user being ourselves, I guess. So, you know, great for your self-esteem, this class. That's what it is. All right. So now, so once we pass this check, though, we are guaranteed that this is in bounds, right? We're guaranteed that this is in bounds. So that means that what can we do? We can uh, see what can. So that means that basically we have to. Uh, you know, insert our thing in the index. And so that kind of gives us a bit of an issue, which is that we can't just like deliberately insert it into an index. We can't just put it into the array. Because if we do, we're just going to overwrite something. Instead, we have to move everything over. Right? So, for example, if I've got these things over here, if I've got a bunch of these items over here, I've got, uh, I've got five, two, four, and six, and I want to, and I want to add an item at index one, right? I can't just simply put my new item here. Instead, what has to happen is I've got to kind of shift everything over to over. I have to move the six over here. I have to move the four over here, so I can move the two over here. So now I have an empty space. I can put the the the, the item in. Make sense? I have to just shift everything over to the right. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do. We are going to say, hey, um, for um, int, so we're going to start um, from this index right over here. So if we want to put something in here, we need to start by basically, we've got to start over here, one item to the right of it. So int i is equal to index plus 1. 
Okay. So we're going to start at index plus one. We're going to start one to the right. And what we're going to do is that we're going to grab the item. To Wait, no, that won't work. Think about it for a second. If I start over here, so I want to insert one over here. Two, four, six. If I want to insert one over here, right? If I start over here and take this item and grab it over here and overwrite it, I'll get two. Then I'll just basically fill up on twos. That will work. So instead, what should I do? I need to actually start at the end over here and copy everything over until I get to this space. So instead, I need to start at size. And size is guaranteed to be empty. And we want to do that uh, until while i is greater than index. Okay. So let's go ahead and see. So if I want to insert it at 1, then we'll grab the item over here, copy it over, grab the item, copy it over, grab the item, copy it over it, and that'll, that'll be fine. Okay, so we want to start at greater than index, and then we are going to go down, i minus minus. So i is my current position, and what I want to do is I want to grab the item to the left of me and copy it into my current position. So it's useful to rem so the easiest way to remember this and to not get confused is to remember i plus 1 is one block to my right, i minus 1 is one block to my left. I want to grab the thing from one block to my left. So let me go ahead and say e left is equal to um, list i minus 1, get the thing to my left, OK? Um, and then we want to copy that into list sub i is equal to left. Which we can just simply, what we could, and we can just simply put that in one line if you want to. You could say list i is equal to list i minus 1. Um, now, the, when we're doing i minus 1, what we have to be careful about is that we have to make sure that uh, i is never going to be 0. So we never get an array out of bounds exception. So if is index going to be 0? Well, doesn't matter. Well, we're going to start at size, and i always has to be greater than index. So if index is 0, never actually going to get there. So no worries there. OK, now we've moved all the items away. Which means, which means what? We can totally do this. We can now just say, hey, list index is equal to the item that you wanted to insert. And we are almost completely done here. We actually have one more thing to do. But for right now, this will work for just a bit. So let's go ahead and. Uh, I'm going to write a main class here, PSVM, to test it out with. And I'm going to say, hey, my array list of, uh, I'm going to create an array list of integers is equal to new my array list. Oh, I have to give it a name. Um, list. Okay. List dot add three. List.add4, list.add the index 0, um, 2, one, zero, and then list.add 5. All right, so we'll go ahead and see how well this works. So do I get a burning crater of a computer, or does it actually work? I think it works. Uh, of course, if I do sout.list, I'm in a bit of a pickle over here, because guess, I'll, guess what it's going to print out? It's going to print out that, Okay, which is no bueno. So in order to test this, I have to make a two-string function. Okay, and I'm just going to, so whenever you want to print an object, it automatically calls, when you do something like this, it automatically calls the toString function for you. The toString function comes from the object class. 
So it automatically calls that. So we want to override the two string function so we actually get the um, data. And I'm just going to be, uh, I'm just going to cheat here and I'm just going to say return arrays, which is a utility class, dot two string the list, which will convert the uh, or list into a two string. So now I can actually test it. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, null, null, null. We probably don't want to display the nulls to our end users, but we'll burn that bridge when we get to there, right? So, but it's adding the items correctly. It's not like overriding any of the items. That's great. However, we're not done yet because what if I want, because what I want, my next step is that say I want to add a thousand items to this list. For, uh, and so we do list.add i. I'll get an error. It says it's out of bounds. Index 10 is out of bounds for length 10. So let me go ahead and show you what's going to happen here. Do, do, do. So we add our items. We add our 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we get 10, right? We ran out of space in our, in, in our array to put anything in. So we have one more thing to do, which is that, um, which is basically over here, which says, hey, uh, our capacity was 10. The size is 10. So uh, the question, so basically the first thing we have to check over here now is a new check. If size equal equals capacity, Basically, if we're, com if we're trying to add an item and we're completely filled up, then we're going to we're going to call a new function called reallocate, which will just make more space for us. It's not going to return anything. And I'm just going to go ahead and just create it over here, private void reallocate. And what this is going to do is that we are going to create a new list twice the size of the original one. So we will say that, um, so first thing I'm going to do is say, I'm going to say that um, e array old list is equal to the list, the current list we have, right? So I'm going to store the memory location of our current list. Yes? The of the e. So the E is any type. So if it's a list of strings, it will, e will, this, will, this will be uh, an array of strings. If it's, a, if it's a list of integers, th then the E will be integer. The E just means it's any type. It's like object, except it's like a chameleon. It will change into whatever we need. So you, could you write object instead of the phrase that you said? Yeah, I, I'd, have to, um, I'd have to cast it. Um, but actually, over here would be perfectly fine for me to use object. Okay, I'll be curious. In this case. But over here, I don't want to use object because here I want to be able to say, Hey, if it's a list of if it's a list of integers, I only want to be able to add integers to it. I don't want to be able to add strings to it. Um, By using E's, we kind of put a buffer on there. I go into more detail in the videos on this, if, so if you need a if you need a refresher on that. But um, reallocate. We're going to grab the list. Old list is equal to sorry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say list is equal to new. And we're going to do that whole um, shenanigans again. New um, new e sorry new array of objects. And what we're going to do is we're going to say it's capacity times two. We're going to make a new array twice the size of the original one. Okay. So we create a new array twice the size of the original one. Actually, probably be easier if I say capacity is equal to capacity times two. So double the capacity, create a new array of the new capacity, right? Don't need to change the size, but what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say for uh, each item in the old list, so for int i is equal to zero, i is less than old list dot length. 
So every item in the old list is going to get copied over to the new list now. So we'll just simply say that list i is equal to old list i. So we just copy everything over. And now that should be it. So now if I run this, it should double in space every time we run out of space. So and that means, and so now it was perfectly able to add a thousand items. No, wor no worries. Um, each time it, it ran out of space, it doubled the amount of space it needs. So, so we started at 10, we went to 20, which then went to a capacity of 40, then 80, then um, 160. Now the advantage of doubling is that, actu is that it allows us to um, amortize our costs is the technical term to put it, which means that basically, yeah, it cost, it's actually kind of an expensive operation to move every item over and to create a new array. But since we're doing it pretty infrequently, it actually becomes fairly cheap um, if we average that out along every add operation. We amortize that cost over every add operation. And every it's better to increase the capacity to double the capacity so you don't have to do it every time. If instead it was capacity is equal to capacity plus one, that means that basically I'd have to create a new array every single time I was adding an item, which would suck. Would use up a lot, it would take a lot of time. And time is way more important than anything and than any other resource you have. Okay, I'm gonna harp on this a lot. Time is the most important resource we have. You can always buy more space, you can always buy a bigger battery pack, you can't buy more time. Can't run to you can't run to the grocery store and buy me five milliseconds. Can't. All right. So that is the add um, method for it, and that's all there really is to that one. So, with that said, um, let's go ahead and work on the other two easy methods now. The other easy method being size. So, let's go ahead and look at the other easy method before we close it off with the remove method. So, we just have uh, get, so that will return whatever type there is at an index, an index. And the first thing we have to do is, of course, check is this a valid index. Or we don't have to. I'm going to go ahead and be lazy and just simply say, hey, we can totally just return list index. If we want, we can, if we don't want to be lazy, though, we can check first if index is less than zero or index is greater than or equal to size. Now, why is it greater than or equal to here as opposed to greater than? Well, there's nothing at, so at index size to retrieve, right? You can add to it, but you can't retrieve something from index size because it doesn't exist yet. So if it's greater than or equal to index size, then that's an issue. So we'll throw new index out of bounds exception. And go ahead and copy that line if you're typing it out. I'm going to go ahead and copy it myself because I'm going to use it in the set and the remove method. Public E set is a bit more involved, but not that bad. So given a int index and the item you want to put in that index, we're going to replace what's there. We're going to replace the item there. So first thing we do is that we do that out of bounds check. And then I'm going to grab, I'm going to say E old item. The, again, the E is, a, is basically whatever type of list it is. This is going to be, that's the type E is going to be. E old item is going to be whatever was there at index, list index. Then list index is now going to, hold, we are now going to store the new item at that index and we are going to return the old item back to the user. It's a right, it's very it's a very very straightforward operation there. Final operation is the remove operation. Which given an item given an index we want to remove something there. 
So again, we do the same exact out of bounds check. If it's out of bounds, we can't remove an item there, from there. Right? Now if I want to remove an item though, um, what I need to do is I have to shift everything down so there's no gas. So if I'm removing from index five, if I'm removing index zero here, that means I'm removing the five. So that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the two and copy it down. Then I'm going to go over to the two and say, and I'm going to grab the four and copy it down. And then I'm going to grab the six and I'm going to copy it down. And actually, I'm just going to leave this thing over here rather than deleting it. Why? Because as soon as I add an item, it will be overridden. And I'm going to decrement the size. That's an important thing to do. So just like the add, to make sure I don't forget to do it, I'm going to do a size minus minus over here. So if you subtract the size, even if the array is like greater, yeah. I mean, it will just automatically... Yeah, because the size is what we're used to say this is like... So basically we have a virtual list inside of an array. Right, there's the disadvantage of an array list is that it can waste space with a whole bunch of nulls, right? A bunch of unused space. That's the disadvantage of an array, uh, the space disadvantage of an array list. So, um, also, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that error as soon as I can. So, e old item, or see, e removed is equal to a list. Uh, index, right? So we're going to decrement the size and we are going to return that item. We haven't actually removed anything, I'm just getting rid of the error because I, because just when, when, you, when you work with a lot of freshmen, you make sure that there's never any errors because you got to get them in the habit of making sure that there's never any errors. So, list removed, okay, and now uh, sorry. Now we have to basic. We're going to start at four int i. Start at index uh, index for one. So we're going to start at the uh, that the item that we're going to remove. I is less than uh, in, and the i is less than the size of the array. I plus plus. So I is less than list dot, yep, the size of the array. And what we're going to do is that we're going to say, hey, we're going to take the item that's to the right of me, to the right of my current position, and move it into my current position. And so how are we going to test this out? We're going to test it out with our giant array that we just made. Um, and what we're going to do is that we are going to say list.remove. I'm going to remove the item at the index. We're going to remove, let's say, two. We're going to remove the two from there. And that seemed to have worked no issues. I'm going to remove another item just to make sure, though. So I'm going to remove the 0 as well, the item at the beginning as well. Make sure that basically that's not a fluke. So there we go. So we now have a completely working list. Now, you may have noticed that while the add had a reallocate, the remove has no reallocate. You may be wondering why that is. and that's. A couple reasons. First off, I'm lazy. Uh, second off, though, in in theory, is actually a bit. Uh, you don't actually have to resize too often if um, you're adding. There's a trim method, I believe, that basically will trim down the size of an array list to to the uh, array if you want to be man if you want to man manage your memory manually. But um, typically. Um, let's say we have an array. Okay, so let's see what happens. Suppose, though, that basically if half the space was filled of an array or less, we'd reallocate. We'd shrink it back down. Okay? So let's say we add 
um, 80 items to an array, right? We start at 10, we double to 20, we double to 40, we double to 80. So now we're completely filled up after adding 80 items, okay? Now suppose we remove a single item. Sorry, let's actually add one more item so we're at 81. So now our capacity is at 160. Now let's say we remove an item. We're now at half capacity. So according to the rule that I set up, which is that I said, which is that we'll reallocate if we're at half capacity, we'll re-shrink now. And now suppose I add another item, and then I remove another item. We'll add, we'll allocate, and then we'll reallocate. And this actually can happen more often than you think it might actually. It can actually be a bit of a pain, where you add some items, and then that's the maximum capacity, so you add and you remove, and you add and remove. Um, and that can be a bit of a pain. So how do you get around? So um, if you do want to be memory efficient with these things, typically you want to remove, you want to trim down if you're, you want to reallocate if you're at a quarter of the capacity. But we don't really need that, and you're probably never, and you're never going to see that again in this course. So, so typically we only reallocate when we're out of space and we're adding, because the assumption is, is that we'll probably always need to add more things. It's like collecting pictures on the internet. Never have enough funny cat pictures, and it's so hard to get rid of them. So, those are the array lists. So, I think for today, what I will do, and honestly, that's most of, I really trimmed down that lecture, yes. Sorry, would you mind just pulling that off again? Just oh, my bad. Sure. And I will, and I'm recording this, so I will upload this, and I'm gonna get a proper YouTube channel set up tonight. Okay, or I, I, or I playlist. Try to follow along with the um, example linear diffle. It's just a lot of the variables. Are like oh yeah, I changed the variables for this one. Sorry, I think it. Um, and the variable and the one in the GitHub does match the one that I do in the vid actual vid uh, um, videos. But I figured since we were getting uh, you know doing pretty well on this, there was no sense in like wasting class time. You're paying for this time, might as well use it, right? Um, so next, as I mentioned earlier, we'll, we will do a quiz next, um, you know, next lecture period on Thursday. Um, and that will probably be um, one or two quizzes on array list, and then we'll do another quiz that will give you a, yeah, so basic arrays list concept. And then I have a whole bunch, I have a whole battery of quizzes. Um, anyway. And if you need the file, though, I can I can always get you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can just get it from the recording. It's fine. Or you can get, or you can come over here, and I can hand it to you later uh, after yeah, after just, after this one. Just, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the homework that we'll be doing on in lab on Wednesday. Uh, on Thursday, and the reason I want to go over this is that there's one thing I don't want you to do because it's a pain in the butt, mainly because there's no easy way to do it. Okay, there's no easy way to do this one. Um, rather, it's straightforward. It's just a mess. It's a nested loop. Um, it doesn't really make too much sense. Okay, so anyway, uh, here is the list strings and method. So list methods and strings. So this is going to be resemble a lot of the home, some a number of the homework you did with arrays. Right, you probably had to do like, okay, do this thing with arrays, but we're going to remove stuff, right? Or, or, but, or like we're going to remove all even items from the array or something like that, right? It's going to be the lot of uh, exercises like that only with lists instead, all right? So um, read the footnotes for hints. Also, this is just me going over how do we make... So first off, I will talk in more detail tomorrow, and I'll help you get started on Thursday with writing the methods. How do you write a method that uses a generic list? You don't use it like this. So say you wanted to have a, a function that checks, is this item in this list, right? Where the item, and here we care about the type because, right, we're not going to bother checking unless it's a list of the same type, right? Does this integer, is this integer in this list of integers? Okay, so the way we, you'll get an E can't be resolved to the type, and that's because over here, what you want to do is that in your class, you want to go public static and then have 
and E over here which says, in this function, and just in this method only, in this method and only in this method, we are going to use a generic type called E, which is being basically saying that basically E only exists in this method and it's a list of E's. Don't know what the E will be, the user will let us know. And I'll, it, it, if, it, if it feels a bit weird now, don't worry about it. It does feel a bit we weird the first time you use it. it. did for me. That's why on Thursday I'll help you get it set up. Okay? But this is the way you want to write. Um, you want to use, specifically, you want to use it when you don't know what type the list is going to be. If you know what type it's going to be, like it's a, oh, it's a problem that deals with a list of integers, then go ahead and use a list of integers. Don't use a list of, of E's. So there's a lot of ways you can trip yourself, so don't worry about it. Um, I will help you um, because I've seen all the ways this, I've seen, I think, a lot of the common ways that students accidentally trip themselves. Okay? So, um, and this is actually a bit of a tricksy homework. Like, deliberately so. There's a, there's like a deliberate catch, uh, gotchas in this one that and it's, and it's made for this type of class where we have a lab and you can ask questions about the gotchas. So don't feel bad if you, uh, the gotchas are there to challenge your assumptions. So I'll tell you though that the gotcha though, actually there's really only one gotcha, which is, uh, which is in uh, remove all instances. So we'll get there. Um, so you've got uniqueness, which says, hey, given a list and returns true if all the items in the list are unique. All the items are unique if none of them are the same, right? If none of them are equal to each other, okay? You return false otherwise. All multiples. So this takes in a list of integers and an int. And it returns a new list of integers, which contains all the numbers from the input list that are multiples of others. So the example, and I like that input output examples. So here, if I give you this list and five, you're gonna get back five, uh, 25, five, 30, and 25 all the items from this list that were multiples of five. Make sense? Okay, all strings of size. It grabs all the strings of a, of a certain size. So say your list is, I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Again, toddlers, so you know, that's song. Um, so if I give you three, you're gonna return eat, 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 and, because it gives you all the things of size three. Is permutation, we are going to do uh, all together because it's a bit of a hassle. Um, which gives you, it will return true if the lists are permutations of each other. In other words, they're, they got the same items, they just happen to be in different orders. It's actually a bit of a tricky one. It's actually a bit of a headache. Uh, string to list of words. Um, this will take in a string and convert it into a list of words. We'll assume that each, that each word in the input string is separated by white space, okay? And then this one uses a regular expression, but I give you what regular expression to use. Speaking of regular expression, there's an extra credit there that you should totally check out. Um, so for instance, if the, uh, if the input string is hello world, and when I say extra credit, there's an extra credit assignment to check out. There's hello world. For extra credit, sanitize the string, cleaning it up so that we remove the punctuation and other extraneous characters. So, so hello world would become hello and world. It would return a list of strings. Uh, you can sanitize your input, cleaning it up so you, the punctuation is removed. So you, and you would get five, and I think you'd get how many extra credits? So that's five points over here. And then finally, remove all instances, which is my particular favorite. Uh, and I'll, which is given a list and an item, it will remove all instances of that item. So for instance, if I'm past one, four, five, six, five, five, two, and five, I'm gonna remove all the fives, which means that the resulting list should be one, four, six, two. It's not gonna return anything because it's just gonna change the list that was passed to it. This one, the reason it's tricksy is because I want you to test it on this example specifically, where you have one, four, five, six, five, five, two. Test it specifically on that one. If it works, great. If it doesn't, and if it doesn't remove all the fives, then you are then you're hitting the purpose of the exercise. 
And if you don't, and if you, and if you don't fall into the trap, don't worry. I'll ask you about the trap later on, so you can answer me. That this is the one that I'm gonna, you're gonna demo for me. I'm gonna ask you uh, how you solve this one particularly. Um, and then I'll grab one of the, then I'll look at one of the others, and that's fairly straightforward. The next homework behind that, beyond that, is this math uh, worksheet that I might revise. Um, for you guys, but it's just a worksheet on Monday that we'll be completing on big O notation. So, um, and again, the regular expression uh, extra credit, I highly recommend you do it. You can complete it in any language you want, in any programming language, so, because I, I don't speak any foreign languages. I only speak freedom English. <laughs> I joke. But, um, so like, here, things you want to do is like um, you use regular expressions to figure out stuff about this dictionary file I, I send you uh, I that's posted um, I like animals how many words have cat and, or dog in them four letter words are naughty how many four letter words are there how, do more words end in I-O-N-G or I-O-N how many words contain a Q not immediately followed by a U how many words have no vowels how many vowels have two vowels in a row Right, so these are the type of questions to answer that you can answer with regular expressions. And there's a good, and if you're having trouble, please see this link, which is a link to a website called Regexer, which is a regular expression tester, and it will t teach you how to write reg some regular expressions. Or look up regular expression tutorial online. Regular expressions are valuable tools. It takes about two hours to learn them. And it is some of the most valuable two hours you can spend independently. Um, and I'll be happy, if you want to try it, I'll also be happy to sit down with you during lab or lecture to go over those. But that's, but I am done with my um, material. So that, we got that, we knocked that out pretty quickly. I'm happy. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and you guys are dismissed.